from that point. Joining us now, uh, Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus. Welcome, Reince. Thanks for being here. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. We mentioned that delegate count, and it does seem sort of premature to be writing off some of these candidates and some of these campaigns. What's your assessment after Iowa and New Hampshire? Well, I think that's right, and obviously uh, Donald Trump had a good night last night in New Hampshire, and, and so did John Kasich, and, 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 and the rest of the field is going to be working to, to figure out how everything shakes out. But, but you're right. It, it, you remember Mitt Romney didn't really become the presumptive nominee four years ago until about mid-April, and remember, they started 30 days earlier because we had that avalanche up front, Florida went in January, and then all the other states jumped in front. So, you know, this is, this is going to take a while. And, and one thing I'd say is that once we get to March 1st, and there's 12 or 13 states going on March 1st, you all aren't going to have time to say, you know, well, what happened in Mississippi? What happened in Alabama? What about Tennessee? You're just going to say, what's the delegate count? And so I think it's a good thing that people are looking at delegates because ultimately the delegates on the floor of the convention decide who the nominee of the Republican Party is. But my memory of 2012 is also that you were dismayed by the amount of sniping that Republican candidates did at one another, that they, in, in your view, sort of took each other down and damaged Mitt Romney, who became uh, the eventual nominee. Now you're in a situation after New Hampshire where you have at least three solid contenders, Rubio, Bush, and Kasich, who are all going to be pointing, you know, shooting one another to try to get into a, a, a higher spot uh, in the next, you know, go around. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I, certainly I don't like to see that. And obviously, as chairman of the party, I want everyone to follow Reagan's 11th commandment. I know that there's going to be jabs and pushes and shoves, and I think that's all right. Uh, but four years ago, it wasn't so much that I was worried about the sniping. I, I didn't like 23 debates in a traveling circus, and so we've tried to get control over that. But I also remember said many times uh, that, you know, cutting the number of debates was important. But, you know, I, I can't, uh, the, the party chairman can't control everyone's mouth, but the party chairman can control how long you have to kill each other, which is why we <laughs> cut the debates. We made the calendar a little bit shorter, and it's just true. So... People can do and say pretty much what they want, but it's going to come to an end, and we're going to have a nominee, and we're going to unify behind that nominee. And look what Hillary Clinton is serving up. I mean, she's, she's losing to women. Young people aren't supporting her. I mean, she, the FBI is all over her. So where we're at is in a pretty good place. We've got varsity candidates on the field, and one of them is going to be our nominee, and we're going to beat Hillary Clinton or you know, a socialist from Vermont, but either way, I like where we're at. Well, there are those who say that uh, the potential lineup of candidates on the Republican and Democratic sides, you know, the, the eventual nominees, might not be pleasing to a whole lot of Americans. There could be room for a third party candidate to ride in, perhaps somebody like former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg. Now, you have said you're not concerned about his candidacy. Do you still feel that way after what happened in New Hampshire? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I hope he, I mean, in many regards, it's almost a blessing to the party. I mean, here he's going to come in and put states that we used to do pretty well in, like uh, the Northeast. He, he puts New Hampshire in play. He puts Connecticut in play. Maybe he puts New York into play. And by the way, how he gets to 270 electoral votes, I, I'd love someone to try to explain that, how that's going to work. And if he did do fairly well in that regard, and he doesn't get to 270, which he won't, then he's going to leave it up to the House of Representatives to pick the nominee. I wonder who Paul Ryan is going to pick. You know, I have a feeling it's going to be a Republican. So, you know, I, I honestly, I think people love seeing themselves in the paper and they can't stand not seeing themselves. So, you know, here we go with, with, with this conversation, which is fine. It's helpful to us, you know, you know, happy for him to, to grab a ticket and get on board. I know that there have been questions about Donald Trump's relationship with the Republican Party. You're the chairman of the party. I know you can't pick winners and losers. But if Donald Trump hmm. rides all the way to the, uh, to the nomination, does he have the party's full support? Any one of our candidates that are running that becomes our nominee is going to have the best, most prepared ground game, data operation, and turnout operation that has ever been put together by either 
national party. So whoever better, that better is, the they're going to get something very special. Very, they're going to get something very special. Oh, we're much bigger than the DNC. It's not even close. Because Barack it's, Obama we, we've put raised them two to one. Barack Obama put together he a did. huge Barack operation. Obama did. He did. He did. And and now we've got something better, uh, especially if you when you compare us to the DNC, which um, isn't doing very well right now. And I, I think that's a pretty well known fact, and most journalists agree that the DNC is a, a bit of a of a disaster at the moment. All right. We'll see what happens come November. Reince Priebus, the chairman of the Republican right. National Committee. Good to have you on. You bet. Thank you.